Hey, deserving listeners, love is blind. Let's watch. Said Trevor, you are the one for me. You're my life partner. Unbeknownst to her, you have someone on the outside. You're telling. And I, w- I would have been with Chelsea. I told her that. She knew that. Like she, her and I were so fucking toxic. So toxic that. Okay, we're using toxic. All right. So that adds something, and that would be a reason why you would wonder about the viability of your relationship. He doesn't have any reason to be honest about this stuff if he's lying halfway. Toxic. So toxic that after you got out of the pause, you that, said, I'm going to I marry was, you? No, that, I, yes, yes. I, yeah, I, I understand. It's hard to believe his story, given it's like he just walked into a series of consequences that would make it really hard to believe what he's saying. And he's playing right into what a lot of people suspect is happening a lot of the time on the show, which might be happening sometimes, in which someone is a total psychopathic liar and is conning everybody. I don't think that that happens as often as people assume it does. So yeah, he really stepped in it. There's, there's, almost nothing I think he can do to convince the vast majority of people that he's telling the truth and that he's not the complete op. You know, it's not like a shade difference off of what he's saying. It's like the complete opposite of what he's saying, what people think, right? What people would think, but I don't know, you know, maybe I'm selling people short, maybe. Well, so today is Friday. The reunion aired on Wednesday. I'm going to send out a survey, I think tomorrow on Saturday. This episode will air far in the future, so I will get an idea of people's opinion. I'll, maybe I'll even ask this directly in the survey. Do you think that that Trevor is telling mostly the truth or something like that, or how likely? And so I'll get a, a an idea of at least what you think, which I don't think represents what everyone thinks, by the way. But, you know, it's probably close-ish. So I, I will find out later. And I'll present those those findings in another another episode. But anyway, and really, I'm gonna pause and ask my wife. She's seen the whole reunion. She watched it Wednesday night when it came out. So I'm, I'm actually gonna step out for a second. I'm gonna ask her what she thinks of Trevor. Okay, so I just had a long conversation with my wife over there, and she was, you know, she doesn't think about this as much as I do. She just kind of watches the show. So she didn't have a ton of thoughts, but as we reviewed and talked about it, she said that, yeah, it's quite possible that what he's saying is true. Also, what she was saying was, well, if we don't believe him, what do we think the motivation was just for fame? And if so, the other woman would have to be in on it because why would she agree to let him go on the show? So we're led... We're, we're supposed to believe that he and her were both like, we're going to be famous. And so I'm going to play with everyone's heart and I'll get on the show and I'll be famous. Uh, is that is that likely? <laughs> is that a, a viable plan? Um, I mean, I think there are other possibilities if we don't believe him. But anyway, I just thought I'd say that. But I feel at least a little safer <laughs> saying all this stuff. Because my wife said that that's possible. I'm I'm toxic as well. I I admit that. Like, I am. I need a lot of like therapy. I I went in with this of like, I know I'm toxic. I know I need to fucking change. I I wonder what he means by toxic. Usually people mean abusive and angry and harmful, but by context, I think he's referring to not knowing what he wants in a relationship and being wishy-washy and maybe even not knowing when to draw a limit with someone, a boundary with someone. Like I imagine given the way he's talking, I wouldn't be surprised if he would say that he knows it's not a good idea that he is, he was continuing to occasionally re-engage with this other woman. And he knows that she has a problem with re-engaging. You know, we both can't be alone. We have a hard time being lonely or just by ourselves. And there will be times when 
we know we shouldn't re-engage with each other, but we'll get lonely. We'll get a couple of drinks and we're back together. And, you know, all of our friends are saying, knock it off. And I, I, I keep saying that, you know, and she's a good person. We're friends. We have a lot in common. We have a connection, but it's not good that we keep doing this. Or even he might even say in, a, in the past, he would start dating someone else and that uh, he wouldn't tell about this other woman. He would tell the other woman, we're, we're, we're no longer together, but he would continue to text with that woman. And then his new dating partner finds out about it and is like, what's going on here? And he's like, oh, like, it's hard to explain and it's wrong that I'm even, I, I, I don't know. And it's toxic. I wonder if that's what he's referring to. I'm not saying it's okay, but it's not uncommon to have that. And he's, he mentioned, I need to go to therapy. I wonder if that's some reference to his childhood and what compels him to not be okay with not having her always there, right, as a security blanket, which might prevent both of them from actually being able to spread their wings. I don't know what you want me to say. Do you guys want to say anything? Oh. <laughs> I'll stay out of it, Pumpkin. <laughs> oh, no, Pumpkin. Your time is coming. Don't you worry. I definitely am not here to grill you. Just catch that. So Jimmy's like, I'll stay out of it. And Jessica's like, uh, yours is coming. Yours is good. So Jessica plans to blast Jimmy uh, for breaking up with Chelsea the way that he did. Oh, I wonder. Because there was that interview. This is around the time of Jessica being on Nick Vile. In fact, I wonder if it's the exact same time because they're probably shooting in L.A., I'm guessing. And Nick Vile is in L.A. I'm 90% sure of that, and, or at least in that area. And so at the time, Jessica on Nick Vile was saying that no, you don't understand. Jimmy has problems. He was doing things that he absolutely deserved to be blasted by Chelsea. And I was, and I'll, you know, that's possible, but I was hypothesizing that Chelsea has a distorted history, not because she invented it, but because she remembers, she encodes, she experiences things through intense emotions in the moment. They get encoded in a distorted manner. And then they get remembered in a further distorted manner. I see that with people with certain conditions. They will, down the line, just have a completely bizarre memory. And they are sure that those... And they typically are in that category of persecutory, jealous, cheating kind of things. And so if Chelsea and Jessica were friends, or friend Lee, and Jessica's hearing Chelsea rattle off all of these things, right... You could imagine being pretty convinced and saying on Nick Vile, because that was before the episode that came out in which they broke up. Or even, I think it was even before their big fight. So Jessica, at this point, might not have been able to see that big fight, because I think that big fight reveals something's going on with Chelsea, maybe. So I think that's what Jessica's referring to. <laughs> it's really amazing how much data is in my head that I can even speculate so detailed in a, such a detailed manner. <laughs> like it, it's so, so interesting. It's like all this data in my head that would even give me the ability to uh, that very short interaction to just take a guess. I could be all wrong. By any means, it didn't work out for us. And I had just this intuition of why I shouldn't have picked you. I, I couldn't explain it. And now I can. I think it's just disrespectful because we all put 10 toes down into this experience. And one possible tragedy is that, and I understand everyone's perspective here. I was telling my wife that there's a chance that if this was a jury trial and I was on the jury, that I would have to conclude that he's guilty, but I would believe that he's not because he has so much data pointing in the direction. We even talked about how, you know, my wife's like, 
well, why would they even do this? And, and the accusation, I think, is he wanted to be famous, right? He wanted to get Instagram followers and become an influencer. I think that that is apparently one of the most common careers that children today will identify as what they want to do when they grow up. And so I think there's this assumption that everyone wants to do that. And I think that a lot of times it is. I mean, even if it's just like a side gig, like you have a regular job, but on the side you have this influencer entertainment for yourself, creativity, but also like sponsors and a lot of money, a lot of attention. You know, it's it's understandable. I think that's even why people go on reality TV to begin with. It's It's nothing wrong with that. I think it's pretty human. It's not the best look in the world, but humans don't always have the best look. So that's the accusation. And then you look for data to back that that up. And I think I've already said in a previous video that the little bit of him that I've seen on, I don't know if it's Instagram or TikTok, the way that he presents himself in these videos, it looks, I don't want to say thirsty. I don't know what a nicer version of thirsty is, <laughs> but mindful of trying to make his videos as, I don't know, like watchable in a way that makes it look like he's trying to make, I guess that's thirsty. So uh, <laughs> my version of thirsty, because, you know, if you look at my Instagram, I would hope you would not see anything because <laughs> I just, I'm married, I'm old, I don't care. What am I going to do? Uh, so I would say most, in fact, probably everyone, you know, I have looked at all their Instagrams because there was an article that gave links and I sort of just glanced. And to me, everyone looks like they're doing that. Like they're not, it doesn't look very authentic, but maybe it is in a way, in a sense, you know, cause it's not like I just film myself randomly. And then what was that one new app where it was like, you had to take a picture within like 30 seconds. It just tells you like, boom, it's your turn. You got to take a picture and post it. <laughs> I can't remember what that app was called. And it was interesting because you saw a much more authentic because people didn't have time and there's no ability for filters and everything. And at least that was the idea. So anyway, but he does, he does have evidence that even before coming on the show, he seemingly was trying to get something going on Instagram, on, on social media, which isn't a sin, but that would give some motivation to lie to everybody. So anyway, I'm yammering, but I think that there's, too much coincidental evidence pointing in the direction that he was absolutely lying through his teeth and he's lying through his teeth right now to say anything other than that if it were a jury trial. So I totally understand why people would conclude that. But if I were to put my money down, I'd say it was not that. For you to also be playing the other woman, that's also disrespectful. Mm -hmm. A she little concerning I. that she was okay with it. Yeah. Very I confused agree. there. Um, right. So you hear Brittany trying to fit this in and going, well, but she did know. <laughs> you know, Brittany's like, it's also terrible because that would be the narrative, right? That he's lying to women and and uh, conning them all and getting what he wants to out of them. And Brittany is, I think, coming from that place, which I think is understandable, given all the evidence. And then... She's like, it's not also not fair to her. And he's like, well, she didn't know. And he, and then she says, well, but she did know. So I don't know what's going on there. Right. It's, it's, it doesn't quite fit. Right. It doesn't quite fit. Mm -hmm. A she little concerning I. that she was okay with it. Yeah. Very I confused agree. there. Yeah. Um, right. You see Chelsea like, yeah, what? <laughs> What's going on? And I think what people would do is they would twist the narrative. And maybe it is this narrative, but I think they would just cram in the notion that she's some sort of uh, conspirator and or she is this weak, preyed upon and, and traumatized individual that doesn't believe she has rights or something. And that is possible. But, you know, you hear the, I was like, well, wait, why would... <laughs> But yeah, it's it's disrespectful to them as well. I mean, mm -hmm. it's the same thing that you were asking Sarah Ann earlier. Like, what about us that are- We don't know if it's disrespectful to the other woman. There's a pretty good chance that she was also dating other people or open to date other people or something like that, right? I mean, she certainly had enough information to say, now I guess people would say, no, yeah, this is what people would say is that he 
lied to her and said, it's just a joke, don't worry about it. And he didn't really mean that. And he didn't really love her. And he was saying, I'm going on the show, don't worry about it. You know, it's like, um, don't worry about it. Uh, I'm just going to have sex with this other person. It doesn't mean anything to me. Don't worry. It's, it, it's, I just have to do this for some other reason. Don't worry. And meanwhile, they're just conning everyone around them. Yeah, I think that's what they would say. And it's possible. It is. It's absolutely possible. Absolutely possible. But it's among all the options, it's not likely. And given what he is saying right here, and given the fact that if he was a, a con artist, we would hear something very different. Because like I said before, the level of psychopathy is so high in terms of what is being assumed, it's particularly having to lie to to Chelsea every minute in those pods. That's high psychopathy if he was completely lying the whole time. You know, it's one thing to lie about your income on your taxes, or it's another thing to lie about your the value of your house to try to get a loan or something, or or lie to a friend and say that you're sick when, and you can't come to their thing when you, you just don't want to go. You know, those are lies. It's another thing to lie like that. That requires you to, you know, every second of those interactions with Chelsea, you're feeling that, that trickery and that harm to the other person and what you're doing to them. And uh, the other thing that uh, Stacey reminded me of is in the pods, when he did get dumped by Chelsea, well, uh, no, what she was saying what reminded me was when he was in limbo, wondering what Chelsea's going to do, and Jimmy was like really struggling, Trevor seemed totally fine. <laughs> He's just like, yeah, I don't know what's going to do. I don't know if I should hug you. you know, he seemed real light about the whole thing. Oh, and then when he get, did get broken up with by Chelsea, he reacted pretty well. I mean, he was like, well, what if I went first? What, you know, but he didn't crumble emotionally the way that other people do. It doesn't mean that he didn't have those feelings, but it's another detail that just, I think, conspires against him. It's another coincidence that, it again, if I was on a jury trial, I would say there's more than enough evidence that he was lying, that he was lying to Chelsea, that he did not go on the show legitimately. So I, my hands are tied. I, I can't say he's not guilty, but I would think that he just a lot of things conspired against him. You're going in this with the right intentions, mm -hmm. doing the right thing. And what if I did choose you? Would she be lingering around? It's a great question. That's a great question. And it, it sounds like Chelsea might be a little open to the possibility. I'm guessing he's going to say, my relationship with her was very toxic, and I would have been with you, Chelsea, and I would have given it a shot. And the other woman, um, I would have told her that I, our relationship now had to have a firm boundary, and I was going to be with you. And I would have told you about her once I knew that you wouldn't leave me. <laughs> I'm just like... No, I, I told her that up front. I was like, you and I are toxic together. If I meet someone in here, then I'm staying with someone in here. Like, that's why you were going to marry her. Yeah, when I left. Right. And I think that's what he's calling toxic, is as soon as he leaves the pods, he's just like, I can't be alone. And or he concludes, I should just settle for this toxic. I, 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 I want somebody and I, I, it didn't work out here or whatever, you know. A lot of things are lining up. I came up with the speculation before he even said anything along these lines. <laughs> so that either says something or I'm biased, like I'm trying to fit everything into that hypothesis. But I did check in with my wife and she was like, yeah, that's kind of where I was leaning. Left, because I was, when I left, I was in a fucking emotional wreck. I mean, you, Johnny, you were there when I walked out of the pause that day. Was I not? Like, it was really bad. It was like, really bad. Way Okay, so we can all trust Johnny, right? <laughs> so he says that about Trevor, and that does fit with my hypothesis that he was in such a wreck that he just wanted to be with somebody and he just you know, was reaching out to this woman because he was hurt and grieving. And yeah, and Johnny's saying that he was really... so. That's interesting because it's a tick in the column of this story of Trevor's because why would he be in such an emotional wreck? You could argue he was just 
putting on a show. But it's also interesting that we didn't see it. They could have edited it out, but it almost sounds like if he truly was trying to con the audience and the cameras in the pods, he would have shown that emotion, right? If he was truly trying to trick everybody. And as soon as he came back to the lounge, he would have shown those emotions. But I don't remember... I don't remember seeing much, at, uh, if at all, emotion when he came back into the into the lounge, and it sounds like he doesn't tend to show those emotions or something. And then when Johnny and him were talking much later, that's when it all started to come out. I'm so curious where y'all are at right now. Below in the comments section, either someone just identify a comment, you know, just type a comment that says. I think Trevor is lying through his teeth, or I think Trevor is mostly lying. And then another person or the same person, I think, or upvote this comment if you think that Trevor is mostly or is possibly telling the truth or something like that. You know, I don't think anyone thinks 100% either way. And then upvote, downvote kind of situation, and because I want to see. <laughs> I think it'd be interesting for you all to participate in that and see that as well. I'm also curious in detail, in more lengthy comments, what you think about what I'm saying, or maybe it, a lot of people came to this conclusion, I don't know, or if I'm missing something, um, let's seriously debate it and be nice to each other. And remember, none of us know. None of us can know. There's no way for anyone to know. <laughs> um, it's all just like taking a guess based on the data before us. Um, and it doesn't really matter to us because it's not our life. It's his life and whoever's around him. So not nothing's at stake. And if you've been through a situation in which you were Trevor or you were a victim of what everyone thinks Trevor is, your pain is, is still valid just because if someone – because I, I think this is a problem in comment sections. I don't think mine so much, but in other places that if you've been harmed by someone that looks like Trevor – and people start thinking that Trevor is telling the truth, you will personalize it and think that people are siding with your victimizer. That's not what's happening. This is you know, differentiation. There's you and your people, and then there's this, and then there's... You're separate. <laughs> They're separate things. Now, there are situations where that is a legit feeling to have. Like you have someone like Kevin Spacey who would harm people sexually. And... You hear a bunch of people saying something like, well, I'm sure that they deserved it, or I'm sure that uh, they're lying about it, even though there's a lot of evidence saying that Kevin Spacey did these things. That you can get angry at because that shows a general perspective that is anti-victim or pro-perpetrator or something. And that perspective is a problem because that can be applied. But to look at Trevor and absorb all the data and wonder either direction, it's not saying that it's okay to harm people. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, but I am curious in detail what you think about everything that I'm saying. I'm just so curious. And this is one of the problems with making videos and then posting them later. You know, like if this was a live thing, I would just look at the, <laughs> at the chat and I would be able to know and maybe be influenced, right? So, but much later, I'll be in the comment section looking at what you're saying. When I left, I was in a fucking emotional wreck. I mean, you, Johnny, you were there when I walked out of the pause that day. Was I not? Like, it was really bad. It was like, really bad. way worse than it's shown. Like I did, I did get into the experiment when I got here. Johnny was in the lounge and saw me, and I know you guys trust Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, Johnny's endorsement, that could have tipped some serious scales. <laughs> King John, were you more hurt of leaving Chelsea or was it because you were leaving the show? I didn't care about leaving the show. Yeah, I, so Amy asked that question. It's, it's a good one and I'm glad it was asked. I, I, this reunion is so good because they're not just changing the subject, right? They're really... And kudos to Trevor. He knew this was going to happen. That also says something, right? I think. I guess people would say, ah, he's just trying to save his his image. I don't see, I don't hear any of that. There's so many things that people typically will say 
that are more saving of, I mean, whatever you think about Jeremy and, and Sarah, think about their reaction to much less accusations, how they came across. <laughs> and look at, now, maybe he's just so good at it that he is okay with just being a con artist the whole time. and He's just unaffected. It's, you know, it is a thing. But anyway, so Amy's ask, asking, were you sad because you, you got kicked out the show? Yeah, I suppose that's possible if we're really trying to fit that narrative. But I think to think that is indicating that some of the folks, which I don't blame, are married to a particular narrative. And they're like, well, he if, if Johnny is saying he was really crying for real, then he must have been looking like he was crying and maybe crying for real. He couldn't possibly be crying about Chelsea because we've already decided otherwise. So he must have been crying about being kicked off the show. I, th I think that's kind of a stretch. Chelsea has been raked over the coals. No, over the past no. And I will give and Chelsea. At any point you could have come to her rescue. Even I have I asked have, her ceasefire on Jimmy. And at any point you could have just been like. I have made comments helping Chelsea. Did you come here? I'm trying to figure out what the accusation. Jessica is saying. Uh, you could have helped Chelsea. I mean, I wouldn't say that's Trevor's responsibility to protect her from assholes on the internet. <laughs> um, it could even be perceived as insensitive for him to get involved because, well, maybe not because he didn't break up with her. But he is saying that he did try, and we'll, you know, who knows if that's true or not. But again, I think that's a stretch. People going after Chelsea, I think, for the Megan Fox thing or whatever. And I think also because of the sort of things that were happening. Also, you could imagine Trevor seeing the show and going, whoa, I thought Chelsea was different. And and yeah, Chelsea's getting a lot of flack for that. And I think people are going over the top. But I think some of that is at least in line with what I was watching on the show. That was that was interesting. Um but yeah, I, I just don't think that's doesn't really resonate with me. Jimmy, and at any point, you could have just been like... I have made comments helping Chelsea. Did you come here to forward your career and be on TV? No, what career? I mean... I have no I idea. I did come here for... So, I don't really like this question because I would imagine all of them, or many of them, were at least wondering how their career as a paid influencer would do. And this kind of thinking is so weird to me that it's wrong to be that way or to consider that. I think Cam and Lauren, I don't know this, but I assume that they make us, I don't know how much money, but I imagine they make a fair amount of money from their influencer gigs. Does that make them like deplorables or we don't believe anything about their relationship? No. Anyone, if they were given that chance, it would be silly for them not to think. Now, not everyone should take that opportunity. It's not everyone's cup of tea. But if that opportunity comes your way, you should think about it. And, you know, does this work for me? How, how do I want to do this? So it's possible he wanted both because it kind of looked that way. kind of looks that way for a lot of folks. Because <laughs> you know, I'm guessing the true answer for him here is, yeah, I was hoping, but that's, I think we all were to some extent, um, more fun because I think from the outside, looking at an influencer, it can be tempting to reduce them to their influencer life and only think and think of them as their whole life being that. And certainly you can imagine some people in a shallow way are that, and they just become their social media. And I can kind of relate because like I heard Mr. Beast talking actually in an interview about how, I, mean, I didn't see the interview, I actually saw it on the Philip DeFranco reporting, but that Mr. Beast was talking about how every, he's obsessed and he's a workaholic and like everything that Mr. Beast is doing, he's always thinking, how can I turn this into content, you know? And you would also wonder like at a certain point, dude, like uh, you have enough money, <laughs> but... It's pretty normal, given what we teach people in our country, that money is the only goal in life, right? Anyway, so that compulsion of, because I can relate to, of, of like every, when you're self-employed and it's this kind of stuff, 
you know, like for nine to five jobs, salary jobs, you go to work, they often won't let you do overtime. So there's no sense staying after work because you got to go home. But with self-employment, like with content provision, if you say watch a movie and just enjoy your life for four hours, you could have made content those four hours and made X amount of dollars, right? So just by going to the movies and enjoying yourself, the opportunity cost is real. (laughs) And also when you're self-employed, especially like in my position, you never know when things are going to dry up. And so you got to strike while the iron's hot. And so you end up kind of getting on this treadmill anyway. So I think, I think people can be reduced to that, but we understand that there's a whole life, you know, that is not being shown that it, you know, it's probably a majority of their life. So for him, it's possible that he was interested in that sort of gig and that sort of fame or something. And behind the scenes, he was having a, a rich, detailed life that was the most of who he was. Am I making sense? Forward your career and be on TV? No, what career? I mean... I have no idea. I I did come here for good and bad reasons. I can't take back that I went on the show. I'm glad I went on the show. So I'm wondering what he means by bad reasons. I think I know what he's saying when he's saying good reasons, bad reasons. I wonder, what is that? Based on what he said in the past up until this point, I'm guessing he means that he wasn't perhaps truly ready for it. He was hoping it would work, but he did have some entanglements, and that was a that was a bad choice. Like he should have really broken up with her or they should have really agreed to like not you know not uh, reach out to each other for a while then he would go on season seven or something taught me a lot about myself and chelsea like i was myself in those pods i hope you know that and any i'm often wishing people would say something like that because it's tempting even though he was the one being dumped he's sort of in this situation where he has to say this now And Chelsea's nodding her head. Now, you know, it's hard to trust Chelsea's gauge. I mean, plus it'd be hard to gauge, but but this is is another tick in the column of believability and that he's not a psychopath because he intuits through empathy that this would be something important to say. And he feels compelled to do it, not for his benefit, well, maybe for his benefit, but also for hers of just like, I don't want you to think that I tricked you. I don't want you to feel like I pulled the wool over your eyes or that um, you were some kind of victim or you were duped or something. Um, I I believe, you know, that where this usually comes up is when you're being dumped and then you say, you never loved me. You've been lying to me the whole time. Like Clay did this with AD, right? During the wedding goes back and that empathy, that care of just like, no, 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 I I was, I was in it. I, I was absolutely in it. And eventually I got to that point where I, I just decided, you know, so it's good that he's saying that. It looks like Chelsea believes him. I will give to you. You're the only person that I owe any response to. Like, I don't give a fuck about people online. I don't need to respond to them. But like you, if you need that, I will give it to you. I appreciate you. I kind of lost what he was saying. It sounds like he's saying, if you ever need to talk, then I'm here for you. Is that what he's saying? There's been suggestions that maybe you were here for, for the wrong reasons. Guys, I just want to say participating in Love is Blind, it's really a once in a lifetime opportunity. Vanessa and I believe in it from season one on. You can. I think this is them either independently or as a part of the production team wanting to get out ahead of this problem. Because there was a lot of accusations about it this season about people going on as a joke or as a lark, not seriously. And when I heard those, it's funny, and I, I guess I'll just say for myself, I heard. You know, people were sending me things, I think, about Jeremy and about Trevor. And my contact on the show, even at least a few weeks ago, was basically indicating that she was fairly, or at least initially, somewhat convinced of the allegations. And I'll say that I was kind of too, right, with at least to some extent. 
it didn't take much for me to be convinced of that, which is interesting, that I just had to hear rumors and see some text receipts to say like, oh, and then I would rant about it. Yeah, I think I even did that on camera, right? It's like, don't ruin it for us, that kind of thing. But as I, as I hear them talk, which I, I'm, trying, I'm gonna remind myself, like, wait for the data, <laughs> especially hearing from the individual, give them a chance, right? Now, maybe it won't work, like with Tom Sandoval, you wait for him to talk and it, he just makes it worse, <laughs> but at least wait for them to talk. And then I hear from Trevor, I hear from Jeremy, and I think, well, I don't know. I mean, especially with Trevor, because he's giving a lot of detail. I think there's a, there's a pretty good likelihood that he did go on the show legitimately, maybe with more of an asterisk than is advisable, but he, was, he wasn't just trying to con everybody. And then with Jeremy... You know, he talks, there's all these allegations, he was engaged. And if you just hear the tagline and it's presented in a certain way, it sounds very damning, right? He was engaged, you know, very soon before he went on the show. How could he possibly be being truthful? Because, you know, the application process happens months in advance. And so, you know, okay, fine. He broke up with someone that he was engaged to. But he was engaged to someone while he was applying to be on the show. He must be a liar. He must be a con artist. But I don't know the timeline. I didn't see evidence of that. And I can imagine there being a story. Jeremy didn't help himself because he didn't say anything. <laughs> but I think there's a possibility that he was legit on the show to meet somebody. And also, there's an asterisk of he has a messy dating engagement life that hasn't been very thoughtful or healthy. And going on Love is Blind was kind of another version of that. Did we hear about someone else that was being accused? Because I I thought it was more than one person. But anyway, so to me, this is kind of comforting because when I watch this show, I want to believe that what's happening is at least close to reality. And to hear because the thing I had heard was that a bunch of the guys had agree had a, agreed because they met in the airport before flying out from Charlotte, I think, to wherever they film in L.A., I guess, that a bunch of the guys had agreed that they were all there just for the fame or just for the cloud or just for sits and giggles. And when you hear that, you just think, oh, is this show unwatchable now? But then you hear the story. It's still all possible, right? But you hear the story and you kind of watch the behavior. Do we think that Jimmy and Johnny were there illegitimately? It doesn't look like it. I mean, Clay has some markers, but it's quite possible he was legit too, at least enough, right? I know there are allegations about Kenneth. It's hard to say. Matthew, God knows. I mean, just in terms of the men because that was the main allegation, right? Um, Now, we do know that there are serious allegations that some people were on the show, or at the very least were going on to the getaways, having not legit been actually engaged. Like, I think season four, there was at least one person, maybe two. There are two couples that got engaged in the pods in, you know, the Seattle season. And Chris Colin and the team had evaluated that they're not legitimately engaged, so we're not going to let them. Or they can certainly stay engaged, but we're not going to take them on the getaway and film them and everything because we don't want to waste our time. And we don't want to have the audience be tricked by that because we want to preserve our brand. And then if they're truly engaged, then we'll likely see them play their relationship out and get at least get close to marriage or at least stay together as, as partners. And according to the reporting, which I can't know, but it sounds credible. And apparently this happens in every season. There's always at least one couple where they're like, eh, it doesn't look real. And then none of those couples reportedly have stayed together much longer after the pods. 
who knows what that means. I mean, maybe once they meet in person, it just goes awry. We've certainly seen that happen before. But but anyway, it, 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 this is giving me more faith in my favorite reality TV show, <laughs> which I guess would give you another reason to not believe what I'm saying because I'm biased, right? See the results. Look around this room. Look at this couch right here. We do not want people to come here motivated by fame. That's not what this is about. It's not fair to the audience. And most importantly, it's not fair to the people right here. It seems like Nick and Vanessa are concluding that Trevor did go on the show just for fame. And again, I'll just say it briefly. I think they should just reckon with the reality that all of them are at least somewhat concerned with that. It would be silly for them not to be concerned with that, um, to capitalize on, literally capitalize on the opportunity. But you can also, at the same time, be honestly on the show. The people who have invested genuinely in what this thing is truly, truly all about. It's just wrong. It really is. For people who come here with ulterior motives. Now, I, I completely agree with what Nick is saying, and he's not directly targeting Trevor. It seems like he kind of is, uh, and indirectly. But I completely agree. I've had the same, the same rant. And, you know, never mind my uh, entertainment or my connection to my favorite reality TV show, at least for the other cast members who are going on legitimately, you know, don't screw around with them. And honestly... I kind of like that they're focusing on this. I don't know if this was some kind of team meeting outcome, but I, I like that they're focusing on it so that the culture around the show and thus future cast members will at least have this in the water that they're drinking, right? That it, maybe it'll be a little bit of a, of a deterrent. I think they should actually publicize that you know, those couples that they actually don't include. I mean, they shouldn't name them, but they should say, and by the way, we actually have times when we identify people who aren't legit. We, last season, we had a couple that were already engaged and they went on the show and matched in the, you know, I don't know what they were doing. They wanted a free wedding. I don't know. We detected that and kicked them off the show. Uh, it happens, but... It's not fair to the other cast members when people do that. And it's not fair to the audience, and it's, you know, frankly, not fair to our bottom line. <laughs> We've got to call you out for it. So, Trevor, I know you asked to leave. You can leave now, man. Oh, my God. I wonder if he will... I'm going to see if he actually will do an interview on other... You know, after I watch this, I'm going to check to see if he has done interviews or he's posted more information because I'm curious if he might elaborate. No, I'm going to change the subject. That's oh my enough. gosh, we have a sign in the audience, AD all day. Yay! And by the way, I wonder if more information come out to make him look more like a con artist. And I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm not aware of that. <laughs> so take it easy on me. All right. Well, that does it for that episode. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really do.